So I've got a question for you. What would it do to the game if it was legal to run with the disc? Think about it for a second. If you can just run with the disc, there's no way to tackle anyone, there's no way to stop a player. What would it do to the game? Well, dribbling is a way of legally running with the disc. That's the way I like to think about it. Um, in my last video, the triple threat, we talked about the three different threats and how dribbling is one of them. And to review, the three threats are to uh, the threat to throw for a score in the end zone, the threat to distribute the disc to one of your teammates elsewhere on the field, and the third threat, the most viable, the most important threat, um, is dribbling. So what is dribbling? Um, it's, a, <clears throat> it's something I've been grappling with for a long time, but how to define it, what is dribbling, what isn't dribbling. Um, you know, there's a, there's a little clip of Dylan Freechild coming up here in a minute, and I had a conversation with him after this game. You know, is that dribbling, is it not? And he was talking about intentionality or being deliberate in any particular way. Um, so... I've been thinking about it, and dribbling, let's define dribbling to be a, a prolonged, sustained relationship with the disc, uh, never being separated by either space and time or very much. So you're always running with the disc, kind of like running with a dog along the beach. The dog's always at your side. Dribbling is a way of always moving with the disc, um, not in any particular direction, not, not towards the end zone per se, just moving with the disc. That's the number one priority. Um So um, dribbling is, um, it's especially in conjunction with the triple threat principle, it's probably um, an order of magnitude more powerful or it'll, lay, it'll make players an order of magnitude more powerful than, than um, the other two threats. And then that might sound like an exaggeration or hyperbole, but I honestly don't think it is. Um, so um, I've pulled up a couple examples of what um, some people may suggest is dribbling. And uh, so check these out and then we'll talk about them. So, were those dribbling? Uh, sort of, maybe, kind of. Most of them were highly illegal. They're out of control. A lot of traveling violations. Um, not very well balanced at all, per se. The players weren't balanced. It wasn't a balanced dribbling attack, per se. It wasn't distributed evenly. Um, but, you know, sure, why not? And so are these. So, 
So yeah, that's dribbling. Dribbling doesn't work. The word doesn't work because you can say almost anything's dribbling. A lot of people say, well, give and go, dribbling's just give and go. That's not really true. You can give and go and run in 180 different, 180 degrees different from where you threw the disc to want go for a score or something. That's not dribbling. Dribbling is a very specific subset of give and go. It's a very refined, intentional, deliberate way of of moving with the disc. Um, so you know, in much the same way that you can say all those clips in ultimate were dribbling you can also say that this is skateboarding picture me upon your knee with t for two and two for t just me for you and you for me alone nobody near us to see us or hear us no friends or relations on weekend vacations. We won't have it known, dear, that we own a telephone. Dear. Day will break and I'll awake and start to bake a sugar cake for you to take, for all the boys to see. Astonishing. That's that's 1976 at the World Championships, and that's the kind of skateboarding that was going on um, back then. That was right at the birth of the Dogtown and Z Boys team, and and the revolutionized or the way uh, skateboarding got revolutionized at that time. Um, but imagine if the players um, in the Ultimate Frisbee video, Schaffner, Nethercut, Prechild, Kolek, etc. Continued their craft, continued perfecting dribbling, didn't focus on hooking or cutting or in cuts or any other thing. All they did was focus on dribbling for the next 30 years. It might look something like this.
So we have a new way of looking at the triple threat principle now. It's a threat to score with a throw, the, the threat to throw to a teammate, and the threat to shred. And shredding is a whole new level up from just dribbling. Um, and for the last three decades, I've been mastering my craft. I, I can't tell you how much joy I get, how much love for the game I have when I'm shredding. I mean, there's really nothing like it. Um, you know, and it, a lot of this comes off as ego and blah, blah, blah. I don't care. Shredding is awesome on the ultimate field. It, it, that's what I live for. And for for many, many years, uh, 25 years, is that's all I've really wanted to do. It's a lot of fun. Um, it's incredibly um, cerebrally gratifying you know it's 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 like i put the snowboard clips in there for a reason i love snowboarding and and carving and it's the same kind of thing where you're constantly reevaluating what's around you and attacking and and getting your balance and you know accelerating decelerating accelerating decelerating that constant undulation of you know the ebb and flow of up and down and back and forth and across um it's a complete blast and you know, just like Messe and, and Stephen Curry, Wayne Gretzky, you know, all those guys are shredding. And when you can shred, um, you know, <laughs> like I can, uh, it, it wrecks the game. You know, and, and as much as I'd love to see Nethercutt and uh, Alan Kolick and these guys um, take their game to the next not level... There's other players out there that I really love to see learn how to shred. Um, Justin Allen, um, Khalif El Salim, if I got your name right, Matt Jackson, Trent Dillon. Um, you know, if some of these guys, you know, learn how to to shred on the ultimate field, um, it would be freaking amazing. I mean, just it's a whole different game. And as a matter of fact, this that last montage that I put together about other athletes shredding in their respective sports, that's what Ultimate Frisbee highlight videos should look like. Not only highlight videos, that's what every AUDL game should look like. Do you not think that that would be entertaining? <laughs> I mean, I've been saying for a long time, Ultimate's not a spectator sport, it's not watchable, but most people aren't really understanding what I'm saying when I say that it hurts my head to pull up those videos then go through all the so all the online crap on ultimate frisbee to pull up a few things of a couple people jacking around with a disc and messing around and and doing something that sort of looks like dribbling that's what ultimate should look like that's what it can look like I know for a fact I've done it for a long time it it's a blast it's challenging it's it's the game within the game you know cuz you're always you know, it's like the your, your your the defenders are your moguls, and your teammates are helping you, and you've got to have an entirely different mindset on your team to facilitate shredding. You know, all those other sports, hockey, field hockey, uh, um, skateboarding, snowboarding, you can shred on your own. In ultimate, in order to be able to shred, there has to be a, a system that you're operating within that everybody's cognizant of. It's beyond buying into a system. It's 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 a super organism. It's the ultimate in selflessness and teamwork. Um, to 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 make to make a canvas for the shredder to paint on, so to speak. Um, you know, um, shredding is a dance, and the disc is my dance partner, and has been for a long, long time. I hope that makes sense. Um, I wish I can convey how much fun it is to. Um, to be unstoppable, you know. I'm I'm 59 this year, and on a good day when I've had enough supplements and pain ibuprofen and whatever else, and I'm in shape, I don't think there's anyone who can stop me. There's no ego there, you know. It, when you apply these techniques and you understand what shredding is, how to do it. Again, look at look at another cut. Imagine he did what he's doing in that video for 30 years for three decades that's what i've been doing perfecting my craft so that's what dribbling is i hope that makes sense 
um, you know, um, it's a real chicken and the egg conundrum because, I mean, I figured it out a long time ago, but, you know, it was very difficult because I had to form my own team, you know, back when I could still play and, you know, get players to agree, okay, we're going to do this system. Um, but right now, nobody wants to, you know, deploy this system without proof and without without having people who understand how to do it. There is no proof. So how do you get there from here? Um, so hopefully sometime soon, maybe this year, hopefully um, we'll get some video of this so people can see what this looks like and how it's different from its next level up from just the give and go stuff that Free Child and Nethercut and other people are doing in that video. Um, it should take over the game. I mean, I don't know how else to say it. I've tried saying it for 15 years. I've rubbed some people the wrong way. I don't know how to explain it um, other than show people in a video. So hopefully we'll get that done this year. And um, if you have any questions, please email me. I would like to get video questions from anybody if they have any questions about how this works or anything else so that I could make more videos and incorporate the questions into the videos themselves. Um, Please spread this far and wide. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you don't mind. I'm going to make a lot more of these. And by the time I'm done, hopefully this will change the sport. No hyperbole, and that's not a grandiose thing. I don't know why the sport never changed. But let's move beyond that. Learn how to shred because it's awesome.